This is one of the oldest housing estates in Singapore. Bukit Ho Swee is home to some 80,000 people. For those who can remember, it was here where Singapore's worst fire occurred 27 years ago. It was in a squatter hut on Tiong Baru Road that the fire first broke out. Fanned by a strong breeze, the flames leapt from hut to hut, engulfing an entire squatter colony. Within minutes, Bukit Ho Swee was ablaze, and the smoke from the flames could be seen miles away. We were getting hundreds and hundreds of calls coming in from people around that area yelling for help and some of them in panic-stricken panic voice they were yelling for fire engine because they could see smoke and fire maybe half a mile away so there, that, that created a great confusion in the control room as to where the fire actually was fire engines from all over the island rushed to the scene but the firemen hastily called back from the Hari Raya holiday did not expect to fight such a blaze Panic-stricken residents tried desperately to save their possessions by carrying whatever they could away from the approaching fire. There were women and children running everywhere. The occupants of the attap houses were carrying out all their belongings. I've seen several trucks going back to their huts, trying to cut away as much as the property they can because there is a whole life savings in the house. So can you imagine we are trying to rush in? to do our work and you get the crowds or the occupants rushing out and with all the onlookers it, it, it in fact it made our job a nightmare to add to the confusion many residents tried to help but it was a futile effort the fire and heat had become too intense and the smoke suffocating soon there was nothing they could do but see everything they owned consumed by the flames <laughs> The fire raged on for six more hours and it wasn't until 8.20 that night before it was brought under control. For three more days, pockets of fire had to be doused to prevent more outbreaks. In all, some three million gallons of water were used. Over 60 acres of the squatter colony was reduced to charred ruins. It wasn't the first time that such a disaster had happened in Bukit Ho Swee. In August 1934, a fire had raged through the same area. It cut a path of destruction across the squatter colony, making some 500 families homeless. But still the people came back, putting together pieces of wood, cardboard and zinc, making themselves new huts. This place, named after Te Ho Sui, a wealthy merchant and philanthropist, was home to some of the poorest in Singapore. There was no proper sanitation and hardly any electricity or water supply. Rubbish and waste were dumped everywhere and the ditches that snaked through the kampong carried its stench.
Many of the residents had to rear animals like chickens and pigs to earn a bit more money. Amidst the poverty and squalor spread infectious diseases like tuberculosis. Secret societies like the 08, 24 and 36 stake their claims here. But the 1961 fire left nothing for anyone. Life savings, possessions, everything was reduced to cinders. Overnight, 16,000 people were made homeless and penniless. Public and government response to the victim's plight was spontaneous. Four schools around the area, including Kim Seng East, were immediately converted into relief centers. Donations of cash, food and bedding were received. Many organizations offered their services, like the British Army, whose cooks made sure none would go hungry. Clothing and cash allowances were also given to help the families tide over the difficult period. A day after the fire, the Prime Minister visited the victims at the relief centers and promised them new homes at the site of the fire within nine months. In the meantime, new flats in estates like Queenstown were immediately made available for the victims. But still, the Housing and Development Board had to tackle the task of rebuilding Bukit Hoswi for the affected families. Never before has the Singapore construction industry undertaken to build on such a massive scale. So we had a plan, a uh, five-year plan to build at least 10,000 units and over and above that, now we meet this challenge to resettle about 16,000 uh, fire victims. And it's a question of management. How do you bring all the components of uh, such massive construction together and put them on schedule? To keep on schedule, work began immediately after the government acquired the fire site and its surrounding areas. In all, 12,000 units were to be built. Emergency one-room flats were constructed at a rate of 3.5 units a day. Within weeks, a new housing estate began to take shape. By February 1962, more than 3,000 flats were completed and ready for occupation. By that time too, all the affected families had been allocated new homes, either in the new flats of Bukit Ho Sui or the other housing estates. Those who chose to return found Bukit Ho Sui a changed place. Instead of the squalor and dirt were modern high-rise buildings with social amenities like community centers, schools and children's playgrounds. It was a vast difference from the kampung they saw devoured by fire only nine months before. Today, Bukit Hoswi Estate is undergoing yet more changes. The emergency flats built to house the victims have all been demolished to make way for newer and better ones. Yet despite these changes, Bukit Hoswi will long be remembered as a place where the most disastrous fire occurred and where Phoenix-like, a new estate emerged from the smoldering ashes. Thank you.